Transitioning from data analyst to data scientist is a viable way of breaking into the industry. And in this video, I'm going to explain exactly how you can do just that. Let's get into it. I often recommend people to become data analysts first, then become a data scientist. Now, why do I do this considering I've never actually been a data analyst and I went straight into becoming a data scientist? Well, it's for the following reasons. The first one is that being a data analyst or becoming one is generally easier than becoming a data scientist right off the bat. The second point is that being a data analyst, you truly learn and understand how to generate business value and how to actually influence the business using data and not be too tied up upon the most fanciest models that you can implement, which is very common with junior data scientists. Thirdly, at some companies, you may even be doing the same job as a data scientist because the data jobs are quite ambiguous nowadays. And finally, if you invest in the stock market, you might have heard the saying that time in the market is better than timing the market. And I think the same thing is applicable to jobs in tech and jobs all around. I think having being a data analyst and having more time in the field it's better than trying to time it and only really go for data scientists or machine learning engineer roles, which are harder to get. Being a data analyst, even though it's a bit of an easier job, you will still get experience working in tech, working in data, which is completely invaluable. And you'd be a much better situation for you to then to transition into those data scientist jobs. A comprehensive roadmap on how to become a data analyst is outside the scope of this video, but I'll happily create one for you if that's what interests you. Even though data analysts and data scientists can be similar at some companies, there is quite a big difference between them, at least in the majority of companies that I've personally worked at. In general, data analysts are more business focused and will work with tools like Excel, SQL, Python, more than beginner level, statistics and Tableau. A data scientist can pretty much do everything a data analyst can do to a certain extent, but they're more focused on building more kind of algorithms, predictive models, and being better users of Python. So the tools that they would use are Python, machine learning, predictive statistics, software engineering, and cloud systems. So it's pretty much everything, like I said, data analysts can do, plus some more software engineering and some more like harder mathematical machine learning stuff involved. You can think of it as data analysts are more looking at what happened and data scientists are more interested in what is going to happen. But both are necessary because you need to understand what happened in the past to make better decisions about the future. So both roles are really impactful and important. It just depends on which role suits your needs more and which one you think you enjoy working more in. You also don't have to transition from a data analyst to a data scientist. But if you're watching this video, that's probably what you want to do. But I've met many data analysts who really love their job, really good at their job and get paid very well. So you don't have to do the transition. It's just I've met loads of people who would like to transition because it's quite a common move because the ceiling for data scientists and machine learning engineers is generally higher in terms of pay and probably recognition over data analysts. But like I said, neither is better. It just depends what interests you and basically what you want to do with your career. So if you want to transition from being a data analyst to a data scientist, you're going to need to learn the following. If you are currently working as a data analyst, you probably already have pretty good stats knowledge. So the main things you need to upskill on are linear algebra and calculus. So the things you need to learn are differentiation and the derivatives of common functions, partial and multivariable calculus, chain and product rule, and finally learn all the stuff about matrices. So all the operations like trace, transpose, eigenvalues, things like that. As a data analyst, you're probably quite good at SQL already. So to improve your coding skills, you need to really upskill yourself in Python and also software engineering principles. In terms of Python, you should learn things like unit testing, classes, and generally how object-oriented programming really works. Then learn the fundamentals of data structure and algorithms and also system design. Gain an understanding of cloud systems like AWS, GCP, and Azure. And finally, learn some ML libraries like scikit-learn, XGBoost, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. And the final section you need to know is machine learning. Now, you certainly don't need to be an expert, but you should have a really good understanding of the basics. So the first thing you should learn is supervised learning. These are things like linear and logistic regression and decision trees. You should then also learn unsupervised learning, which is things like KNN, 
k-means clustering and other kind of filtering or clustering algorithms. And finally, it's well worth learning the basics of neural networks and maybe learning some things about recurrent and convolutional neural networks as well. The most straightforward way to learn all these things is through self-study in your spare time, like after work or on weekends. Now, I know some people may not like that, but in my opinion, if you want to work as a data scientist or work in machine learning, these professions are really high paid and they're very competitive and loads of people want to do them. So you can't expect just not putting in any effort and get these high paying tech roles, which have great benefits, great lifestyle, etc. right? You have to put in the effort outside of your normal nine to five and on weekends if you really want a job in a career like this. Now, in terms of resources, there are so many out there, and I've even made several videos about all the resources I would use to learn data science, machine learning, and even AI. I'll link videos on screen here that you can check out, and also in the description below. And I really recommend checking them out because, like I said, I've done videos on exactly the resources I recommend you should use if you want to learn everything within data science, machine learning, and AI. Now, the pros of self-study is that it's very cost-effective. In fact, it can pretty much be free if you learn everything from free resources like Wikipedia, blog posts, etc. It's also very flexible, as in you're not on a fixed schedule, you can learn at your own pace. And also, you can tailor your own roadmap. So you can choose courses, blogs, videos, wherever it may be, that benefit your learning style. And the cons are that there's a lack of structure. So you may pick the wrong course or you may be learning the wrong things without even knowing. There's also kind of no formal credentials at the end. Like you've done the studying, but it's kind of hard to show it sometimes. And also you need a lot of motivation and discipline to stick to this learning path of self-study. If you want to go down the self-study route, then a platform I really recommend you guys check out is DataCamp, who are kindly sponsoring this video. They have hundreds of both paid and free resources and courses to teach you everything you need to know to become a data scientist. I personally recommend you check out their associate data scientist with Python track, which has over 90 hours of interactive content and is currently enrolled by over 400,000 students and it'll teach you everything you need to know to become a data scientist. It will give you loads of hands-on experience creating data science projects using ML and statistics libraries. The things you will learn are data manipulation using pandas, building ML models with scikit-learn, and finally, Maplotlib and Seaborn for data visualization. It even has 10 real-world projects that you can put on your CV to showcase to potential employers. And the icing on the cake is that you can take an examination to get a certification right at the end that is industry recognized. I will leave a link in the description below for you to check it out. The next way you can learn is that you can always go back to school and get a degree in data science or machine learning. The pros of this approach is that there'll be a really strong emphasis on things like maths, statistics, coding, programming at an academic level. So you really learn like the hard skills or the hard maths behind everything in this industry. Also a degree, particularly from a reputable university, can carry more weight with certain employers. You will also have access to faculty, compute resources, alumni networks, and internships, which kind of the university gives you on a plate in most scenarios. The cons are that it can be too theory-based and lack that real-world experience that you need to succeed in interviews. It can take two to four years if you're doing a bachelor's or one to two years if you're doing a master's, so there is quite a big time investment. Not to mention that it can be really expensive depending on where you study. I know in the UK, masters in machine learning can be on average like 15 to 20,000 pounds, which is a lot to kind of cough up upfront. And finally, you'll often need a pretty strong previous academic record and good letters of recommendation. And some people may just not have that. Another option which is a bit cheaper is the idea of boot camps. Now, boot camps have popped up quite a lot recently due to the demand of people wanting to become data scientists, data analysts, and machine learning engineers. Like I said, in general, they offer a cheaper alternative to full time degrees and they're more focused on building hands on and real world projects that you can add to your portfolio. And they sometimes also help with the application process to certain companies. The pros of boot camps are that they're a lot shorter, so they're normally between three to six months long. They also have a real heavy emphasis on building real world projects and using hands on tools like Python, SQL, and machine learning libraries. Many boot camps also offer career coaching, mock interviews, and helping your CV become really polished. So that kind of pro of helping you feel job ready or at least application ready is a real plus. And finally, it's much cheaper than a degree in most cases. The cons are kind of the opposite. 
So one, it may be too shallow and not dive too much into the theory. The second is that it could be too fast paced. Three months and six month period is quite intense and you learn a lot, but it may be hard for everything to sink in. The third point is that because these boot camps are not often really accredited, the quality may vary. So it's really important that you do your research before paying money to do a boot camp. And finally, majority of boot camps actually have limited credibility when it comes to employers recognizing them. Now, this final one is my favorite, and it's all about learning all these data scientist skills in your current job as a data analyst. You can literally learn everything, and I've seen this happen in your current role. If you ask your manager to work on the right projects, you try to work on areas that develop these certain skills that you're after, and you just put yourself in the right situations where you become more of a data scientist over time. From experience, managers love when their direct reports take initiative and really drive their career growth. Because one, it takes work off their plate. Two, it looks really good for the manager that the direct report is really progressing in their career. And three, it also benefits you and that makes managers happy. So it's a win-win for everyone. But like I said, it's kind of up to you as a data analyst to really push yourself to be more of a data scientist in your current organization. The pros of this one is that one, you're getting paid to learn, which is the biggest win in my opinion. The second one is that you'll be solving data scientist problems using real world data in for real world business, which is invaluable experience. The third one is that you'll be getting real life data science experience, which majority of people who have boot camps, degrees or self-studying do not have. And finally, it may even allow you to transition to becoming a data scientist full time in your current company. So without even trying to transition or move or, you know, learn these things on the side, you can learn them directly in your role as a data analyst and then become a data scientist at your current company. I've seen this happen many times and it's unbelievably not easy, but it's really straightforward if you express that interest to your manager and to other members of your team. Now, the cons are that this may lead to more workload because you may be juggling your current work as a data analyst and also some of this more data science work that you're trying to do. And the second con is that at some companies, this just may not be possible and the roles and requirements and kind of what you're meant to be doing is very fixed. In my experience, I have not seen this at all. As long as you express, like I said, interest and very clear of your intention, then most companies, most managers, most teams are very accommodating. But you obviously can't give up your current responsibilities, but you can express interest in wanting to work on certain projects and to improve certain skills. During and after your studies, you need to create some sort of demonstration of your data science abilities. Basically, you want to create a portfolio. I'm planning to release a whole video explaining exactly what you should have in your data science portfolio. But for now, I'll give you a short summary of the main things I want you to do. The first one is to enter a Kaggle competition. Do one or two. The point is not to place very well. If you can, that's great. But it's more to show how you can apply data science and machine learning to a real world data set and a real world problem. The second thing you should have on your portfolio is that you should have four to five kind of small data science projects. These are projects that you can do in about one or two days using a variety of ML algorithms. The point of these is not to be like groundbreaking, but to have some stuff that you can showcase on your GitHub profile so it doesn't look completely bare. This is more for optics, if anything. After that, I'll do some blog posts, ideally on the four to five projects that you've just made. So aim for around five blog posts. Again, the goal of blog posts is not to go viral, but just to add them and there's like another quiver in your bow, as they say. And the final thing you should have in your portfolio, which is like the centerpiece, is one project that will take you about, you know, a month or two to do if you're working on it like an hour or two every day. Now this project, I can't tell you exactly what it needs to be, but this project should be, like I said, something of reasonable scope, something that's personal to you, because if it's personal to you, there's like storytelling involved, it's kind of something no one else has done, and it just needs to be of sufficient scale, personal to you, and something you can work on consistently. That's all it needs to be. Again, I'll do a whole video explaining exactly a bit more details about it, but that's kind of the main thing you need to have, like one project that's sufficiently big and is very personal to you. I know I've said that multiple times, but it's just to really iterate that point of what that project should be. That's literally all you need in your portfolio. Don't overcomplicate it, don't add all these extra things, just do those things I just said and show up every single day and just do the work. Now, getting the job is the hardest part. The easiest way, like I said earlier, is to transition internally. So be a data analyst in your current company and express the interest that you wanna move into becoming a data scientist. 
Like I said, that's the easiest way of doing it, and that is the way I've seen most people be successful. But if this is not an option, then you have to start applying. To do this, you need to align your CV slash resume, LinkedIn and GitHub to make sure they're all consistent and they're cohesive together. Another thing is to ensure that you start calling yourself a data scientist. Don't say aspiring. People often say to me like, oh, but I'm not a data scientist yet. I studied physics for four years at university, but I'm now a data scientist and a machine learning engineer, but I'll still call myself a physicist. You don't have to work professionally in something in order to become, to be called that, right? So you're studying data science, you are a data scientist. Don't let that be a mental barrier. And I promise you, once you assume that identity of becoming a data scientist, it'd be a lot easier to get those roles because you're already thinking and acting like one. You should also utilize your portfolio where you can to really showcase your abilities. So like I said, you should have a really kind of cohesive unit between your LinkedIn, GitHub, and CV and resume. Everything between those like, like I call it the holy trinity, should link together. Your projects from GitHub should then have a LinkedIn link to your LinkedIn. LinkedIn should have a link to your CV, resume, and, and LinkedIn back to GitHub. You know, they should all work in unison because you kind of want to trap people, I call it, in your system so they get more information about you and they see your work more. Because the more time people spend on your profile, on you online, the more they'll know you and the more likely you are to get hired. And finally, the last thing I recommend you do is that leverage your network. If you've been working as a data analyst for X amount of years, you very, very much likely know someone who's a data scientist or machine learning engineer. So you can't just message people and say, I'm really interested in applying for this job at your current company as a data scientist. Could you please refer me? Chances are people will give you referrals because it benefits them and it benefits you, right? So don't be shy about this. Some people may say no, but so be it, right? You don't lose anything from asking. So as much as you can, try and leverage your network because referrals are a big thing particularly in america in the uk it's a little bit different but they do help so if you can leverage your network to get as many referrals as possible for any job that you apply to the last thing i'll leave you with is that the beauty of transitioning from data analyst to data scientist is that you don't need to rush you're already in the database role you're already earning money so there's no time pressure for you to move across within you know a year or two you can take your time really learn things properly and slowly build up your skills to when you fully feel ready to make the move. But obviously don't procrastinate. You kind of want to have a saying I like is micro urgency or macro patience. So do things in the current day that'll get you closer to your goal, but be willing to take the long route or just be a bit more patient in the process because you have time on your side. And like I said, you're not losing anything from taking your time and really learning things. But with that, good luck to you and I hope that you do become a data scientist. Oh, and one more thing. If you're after more personal advice on how to become a data scientist or machine learning engineer, then I offer one-to-one -one coaching where I help you do your CV, prep for interviews, and all around just improve your portfolio to land these jobs. If you're interested with working with me, then this is linked in the description below for you to check out.